guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and thank you for 300,000 subscribers. I am super grateful for all of you. So recently, I received an influx of messages about this Bolt Pro device, which claims to be the ultimate phone battery and performance booster. Well, we'll just see about that. Of course, now I'm curious and I wanna dig into the BS that lies underneath. Now, before we continue, some of you are probably thinking, wait, Ken, you already did an episode about multivolts. Isn't this just the same thing? Well, in a way, yeah, <laughs> but there's a lot more going on here with the Bolts Pro brand. There's a lot of other fishy stuff that's happening that's not just about the physical product itself, namely the video ad. The ad starts with saying, there's a 90% chance your phone is already infected with this and then they cut to a shot of the Bolts Pro product. There's a 90% chance your phone is already infected with this. That's terrible editing. What, is my phone infected with your product? Not a good start. The narrator claims this product is reversing planned obsolescence, or as their website says, planned obs whatever that word is, and smartphone companies are trying hard to make it illegal in the United States. But then they show unrelated CNBC footage of Apple testifying against Epic, which has nothing to do with planned obsolescence. Then the ad claims this device can turn your smartphone into a lightning fast handheld supercomputer that will last a lifetime. It achieves this by using extremely high tech technology that overrides your smartphone's operating system. Then they mention the Quick Charge 3.0 technology and claim a depleted battery can be charged up to 100% in just 11 minutes, unlocking the full potential of the battery, making it last up to 56 hours. Easy now, Ken. You're Zen Ken now. Don't rip these guys apart just yet. Just whew, deep breaths. Then they pull this BS backstory out of their butt. They claim this device was created by a former Apple engineer who was present at the creation of the planned obsolescence scandal. The ad continues to say that phone software updates are disguised as planned obsolescence to make your phone act up. Then the ad says other people at Apple join this woman in her quest to fight against this. Then it ends with a low budget call to action screen. All right, and that's it. Now do I have permission to tear this thing apart? Let's do it together. First off, the claims about the charging speed are way out of whack. Not only do they sound too good to be true, but they're not even consistent in the ad. One part claims an 11 minute charge, while another part shows 20 minutes until full at 80%. And this likely fake review says eight minute charge from 10% to 98%. Pick a number. More inconsistencies equals more red flags. In reality, the Quick Charge 3.0 standard can generally charge a phone to 80% in 35 minutes. The last 20% charges slower to prevent damage to the battery. Also, the Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 standard isn't supported on all devices, so I would prefer advertisers use caution when touting such features. And just for fun, I searched Qualcomm's Quick Charge documentation and Bolts Pro and Multivolts never show up in the document. Well, hey, you'd think this revolutionary technology would at least show up in there, right? And on top of that, the battery healing claims are completely bogus. The wear and tear in your phone's battery is chemical. Parts of the battery physically wear away with time. And there's nothing that a USB power adapter can do to magically pump fairy dust into your phone to make it heal itself. It just doesn't work that way. I do dive into this topic more in my multivolts episode, so I highly recommend you check that out. Next, the claims about the Bolts Pro overriding the operating system seem completely insane. I'm not 100% sure how this affects the Android world, but in the iOS world, accessories can't just bypass or override the operating system. Accessories can communicate with certain applications, but they can't just plug into the device and start automating whatever they want and bypassing the iOS security. That doesn't work, especially when the device is disconnected like what they show in the ad. No iOS accessory can plug in and just inject code and have it automate stuff. Like, that sounds more like a virus than anything. So that information is completely bogus. Also, I tested it. I have the Bolts Pro accessory right here. And I tested it with my iPhone 12 Pro. And on my iPhone, I have the USB accessory setting under Face ID turned off, which is the default setting which means if your phone is locked for at least an hour and you plug in an accessory which requires data, not just charging capabilities, but access to data, you will be prompted to unlock your phone to use the accessory. But in this case, that didn't happen. 
Charging occurred, but the product didn't show up, further proving that there's nothing inside of this device that is actually interacting with the phone in any way. It's just a cheap charger. Now we get into the dramatic backstory regarding this so-called Apple engineer who left the company to start Bolts Pro. So who is this woman? Her name is Mayuko and she runs a YouTube channel about tech, careers, and life. To my surprise, she actually was an iOS engineer, according to her YouTube channel description, but it doesn't specifically say she worked at Apple. In fact, her video descriptions say she worked at Intuit, Patreon, and Netflix. So I believe that evidence already makes it pretty clear that this Apple engineer character is totally made up. But I didn't stop there. The ads footage of the supposed Apple team isn't recorded at Apple Park's ring building at all. They showed a drone shot of the exterior to help establish the setting, but the interior is a totally different location. None of the architectural design matches anything in the real ring building. Well, that's great, Ken, but what if they're at a different Apple office and they have different interior design there? Possibly, but I looked into that too. My analysis concluded this is a Patreon office because at one minute and 55 seconds in one of Mayuko's videos, you can see Jarvis Johnson in the background. And he worked at Patreon around this time frame before he pursued YouTube more. And in Jarvis's A Day in the Life of a Software Engineer video, you can see a vaulted ceiling which is very similar to the one in Mayuko's video. Also, Jarvis attributed Mayuko in the video description, so this is pretty airtight. So, she didn't work at Apple, and this ad was just lying. Big surprise! Keep them coming. Oh yeah, they don't call me the detective for nothing. Then we get to the software update part, where the ad talks about your phone possibly acting sluggish after a software update. And again, they talk about this planned obsolescence conspiracy. This is a clever move because a software update could potentially cause a performance dip, but it's not due to a mega corporate conspiracy. So let's just take our tinfoil hats off. These advertisers are using half-truths to try to trick you. Before we talk about performance dips, I wanted to address this speed comparison. The right-hand phone was running faster than the left. That's because the right-hand phone is an iPhone 12 with a faster processor than the 11. It has nothing to do with their Bolts Pro product. Now, here's a couple important things to note. First off, newer software on older hardware can sometimes run a little slow. Newer software has new features and technologies, and sometimes those things need more memory and more processing power to run properly. We wouldn't expect a 1987 Macintosh SE to run the modern macOS desktop environment in 24-bit color at 60 frames a second. Yes, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it helps illustrate my point. Generally speaking, newer software works best with newer hardware, especially after many software updates, major software updates, that hardware starts to get left behind a little bit. And that's why certain companies like Apple will say, hey, this hardware is not compatible on this newer software. But they still do a great job supporting old devices. Look at iOS 15. It can still run on iPhones from years ago. But on the flip side, and here's the other thing that we need to talk about, there are some freak cases where phone slowdowns can occur. Kind of like what happened with Apple's infamous battery gate. In 2017, Apple reported they were throttling the maximum performance of certain old iPhone models due to chemically aged batteries. If the iPhone system on a chip was using too much power and the battery couldn't supply it, the phone could unexpectedly shut down. So to prevent that, Apple throttled the processor so it could keep running. Now, applications may run a little bit slower, but at least your phone isn't unexpectedly shutting down. However, Apple wasn't transparent about this at first. So Americans band together and did what Americans do best. They sued the hell out of them. Apple apologized for the poor communication and then reduced the out of warranty battery replacement program down to $29 temporarily. Since then, Apple has also drastically improved battery features, including a feature which reports your battery information with granular detail. And in July 2020, eligible iPhone users who were affected by this problem were allowed to collect $25? Congratulations? So yes, that did happen. But don't let these relatively rare cases 
trick you. Don't let advertisers take advantage of these news stories to manipulate you into buying something. No smartphone company is perfect. Remember the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 batteries? Wow, yeah, the FAA got involved with that one. Anyway, back to the ad. The ad wraps up with two classic scarcity marketing tactics, a 50% discount and a we won't know if we can keep it in stock forever claim. And then it ends. But sadly, it goes deeper than that. But before we continue poking at these guys, I just want to thank Mr. McIntosh and Adi for helping me research this episode. Thank you very much. All right, let's take a look at Bolts Pro's web presence. Like other scams I've busted, Bolts Pro disguises their ads as a news article on websites like StarTechNews.com. The web page is full of reviews, which I'm guessing are fake because some don't even align with the product. This review talks about a monocular and that it's good for bird watching. Oh yeah, I just love bird watching with my phone charger. I do it all the time. Give me a break. The funny thing is the monocular they're likely talking about is the cosmic scope slash star scope, which was another scam I busted. That was a good one too. Another fake article, this time on whiteclawreport.com, talks about MIT graduate Lisa Fan, who they claim is the infamous software engineer from Apple. I've never heard of this person before, so I googled the crap out of her. I searched her name along with Apple and MIT, and I found no connections. The most popular Lisa fan I could find is a YouTube vlogger. And yes, she is attending a university in Massachusetts, which she talks about, but it's not MIT. See, the advertisers are using that half-truth thing again. Sneaky. Be careful out there. So with all of this evidence here, it seems pretty clear that this thing is a scam, but of course, I wanted to try it out for myself, so I went ahead and bought one. Just kidding, I actually didn't. This is from the Multivolts episode. It's the same OEM product, and I already did test it out in that other episode. But hey, if you want to check it out, I recommend it because one, it's hilarious, but also that other episode talks more about how batteries age with time, and I think that's good information to know when talking about this kind of stuff, so feel free to watch that one. And despite the Bolts Pro logo sometimes showing up on the physical product, it's likely just photoshopped because all of the videos show the regular quick charge logo with no branding, just like what happened in my multivolt situation. And you can buy this unbranded product for four bucks on eBay or a buck 85 each in larger quantities on Alibaba. Yet these scammers have the psychotic balls to charge $37.99 for it and value it at $75.98. Huge red flag. Do not buy this stuff ever. You will be completely disappointed. I'm getting a little heated, but the good news is I can cool myself down with my Blau portable AC, which, oh, hey, guess what? Also doesn't work. This is my life now. Anyway, let me know what you think about these scammy devices. And if you have any other stories about cheap stuff you've experienced, feel free to tell me those too, because they're amusing. And if you want to help me buy more scam junk and other crap for me to take a look at on this show, feel free to pledge to my Patreon and you'll get some awesome perks too. Thanks in advance for your support. And feel free to subscribe for more tech episodes all the time. I love making episodes about rare and retro tech, new tech, and of course, scam tech. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Catch the crazy and pass it on.